game three that Khalid was only really picked because you can't stop the quick sand guard. Exactly. So it was so sustainable even without that Estes heal. Now yeah. with the Faramis out of the question, we're open to more burst. We're open to more DPS even. So you can expect that these team fights won't last too long. If somebody goes down, two or three maybe, then the opposing team pushes that advantage. Now we're waiting for one more ban. I I'm guessing uh, you want to take out something from the XP lane. If you're Malvinas here, take out something, something side laney because the mid and the jungle are more of flexes these days. I'm looking at a Fredrin yeah. somewhere in the first three picks from either team. Yeah, possibly. I definitely think that Malvina seems more likely to do so, but this is what I wanted to see. Get rid of the Joy. I feel like right now, nobody really knows what role Joy needs yeah. to fill, right? Yeah, we saw literally in match number three coming in, uh, coming in from Yellow Flash. XP lane. XP lane. XP lane. But even when I look at Naisu, I'm like, you cast the top I was going to say, what's weird is seeing Joy, even in a previous tournament, like, they put her in the jungle, they put her in mid, they <laughs> put her in the XP lane. Where does she where does she fit? And where does she actually excel? I think throughout the tournament, it's going to be similar when we were at MSC, where, where does Julian work better? Oh, exactly. no. Here we go. The Kaja is a roamer, uh, I believe, uh, going into the hands of Yumski. And now, swing, swinging over, I'd say the Frederick's still good here. I think Frederick overall is going to be good, even if you do get hit uh, by the Kaja. All, at the very least, you have enough HP you to kind of hunker down. You don't mind. Bit. Yeah, it, and I, I, I think at this stage of the game, Malvina's game and Malvina's game have a really good opportunity to punish. There's still a lot of priority picks. The far sub, for example, a really good one to distance their opponents, but they even get the carry. And I've heard a lot of things about this attack speed carry shredding through the entirety of Mobile Legends. They got buffed. Carry yeah. got buffed recently, and I believe today alone, Carry has been going bonkers. I think that's what the kids say. That he, she's been bonkers. going bonkers. That's yeah. that's. I think that's around the the sayings here, right? <laughs> so we'll see if uh, pinwheels go bonkers in this game. But uh, still, you already have so much damage just in these two picks alone. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure you can protect that damage, right? Uh, on the other side here, Todak gonna lock in one of my oh. favorites jungle picks here, gonna be the Hayabusa, but they also take in the Valentina. I thought for a moment there it was gonna be the Valentina, that was gonna be your favorite, but then I remembered Gord, and I was like, yeah. very confused for a moment there, but don't <laughs> worry about it. The Hayabusa is gonna be quite an interesting, is gonna be an interesting position, right? Because yeah. again, it's quite dive heavy, and you need to take out this carry, or maybe even the far stuff. Yeah, that's a clear answer by Todak, is saying you pick the softies, all right, we're gonna go ahead and yeah. uh, get the natural predator here. And I like the Valentina, it really doesn't say anything, can still, uh, go into a side lane. Again, it's not that we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. So they can do that or keep it in mid. So there's so much still going on for Todak. And there's the Fredrin. Again, yeah. you want to have that frontliner. And even if you do get pulled in and you, even if you eat a face full of a shadow kill, you're fine. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the good things about Fredrin is even though Hayabusa is able to get one item, uh, one item and even out the scale against the Fredrin, naturally, until Hayabusa maybe gets three items, yeah. four items, it still has to stack up his passive against a Fredrin. He gets to walk away for free. Fredrin can do what he wants to do. Again, that's why I think we have, you know, first pick that Kaja allows mm -hmm. him to have that divine judgment you can hopefully get the right targets to pick off that you want to and then again you have valentina too right so if you want to go feathered airstrike to feathered airstrike have that burst potential on both sides find a lockdown and then by that time high boosters online ready to go that could work and so far that's the only win that Todak has on the valentina yeah. so so far I, i'd say save for the flex again the fact that it's Todak comes with the territory the Valentina isn't worth it yet, personally. That there's not much he's picking up here. I think it's also to change the mentality of how Mal uh, Malvina's game is going to draft, right? Yes. They, they don't want to give high value ultimates over uh, to Todok from this stage onwards in the second part of the draft. I mean, look at the band so far. Malvina's game is like no gold lane. Get, get rid of the, one of the strongest ones, all right? We've already got the carry. Naturally, Beatrix is going to go. But then we look at Todak and they're like, okay, they're going to be playing for the carry. They're going to be playing for their Farsa. Let's get rid of zone control. Let's get rid of ways for them to easily face check bushes. The only, the only different like order that I would like to see from Todak from this is if they say they left the Valentina, they didn't lock in the Hayabusa yet because maybe Valentina, you know, goes into the jungle <laughs> and then you locked in your marksman, right? You have that because you can see all those those last two bands were focused on those marksman choices. That. You bring up a really good point here. There is a good chance that Hayabusa might get chucked down into the gold lane to try and trade against someone who's naturally short range like a what carry. It? Or an XP lane. Yeah, or an XP lane. But 
Wait, I, I don't want to go. Okay, well, let's not get theoretical here. Let's see what this pick is. As this man, Cho gets locked in. Good peel coming in from Malvinus Gaming. Yeah, no, Rome Cho is all right. Uh, yeah. Again, uh, Todak tried to choke it out, right? No Grok, uh, no Estes. I think they were like trying to narrow it down to either a Cho or an Atlas, and they would rather just deal with the Cho. Again, pick off for pick off, and that's all right. Now, Todak, here we're going to finally see where that Hayabusa or that Valentina might finally go. Yep, they have to finish off their team composition here in the second phase. I'm excited to see what this is going to be, knowing how Todak likes to be. Why? Uh, I would argue that Quad might be the better the better way to go. It's an argument. Oh, it's not. Oh. It's, <laughs> surprise. I feel this is so annoying. This in Todok, they do it in the <laughs> local leagues and they do it here. They're like, this? Nah, 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 nah. Let's take it a step further. I'd say this is a double swerve. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're, they're showing us we can flex, but no, we're going to oh. actually keep it close to home here. And... Here's an old school pick. I haven't seen Uranus in a yeah. while. Yeah, this is this is rather interesting. Okay, okay. So we know that Chiku is going at the very least. Chiku is going into the gold lane. Momo is going to go be going into the EXP lane. No shenanigans here. I think it's so. Uh, I'm actually really. I'm happy. I, I am happy that this is what's drafted here from Kodak. Uh -huh. I just want to see how it all plays out here because even so, again, Valentina, you have a couple options. Feathered airstrike. Now you have the way of the dragon. Still mm -hmm. could help you. Still a great pickoff tool to pair with a divine judgment. But it's just two. It's just, just two. two picks. It's just two. It's true. And it's usually these two heroes, right? The Cho and the uh, Farsa. You never get to see them out. They're usually hiding in bushes, and it's usually too late. Oh. So Todak have to play. They have to play on instinct, and they have to time their team fights better than they usually do. I'm not ready for this. I can already hear the chance here, but it's about to be time. The Malaysian representative is up against the Peruvians. It's going to be Todak up against Malvinas Gaming. Quickly, write down your predictions. Cheer for your favorite team as we jump right in to the land of dawn. Oh man, I'm excited for this one. I like both team compositions, like I mentioned, but at the same time, when will Rival be able to get to that point where Hayabusa needs to be to get those Shadow kill kills off and just work around that? Again, five-man rotation is going to be strong for them. Given the lineup that MVG is rocking here, I'd say if they don't give uh, the, the respect that Rival demands, mm -hmm. Harley and Joker are going to have a hard early uh, time in the uh, game here. Oh. Given that Stephanie needs to babysit them. Look at this. It's high and dry on Rival. So as long as there's only one of you around, Best believe that feels like it's more than just one core item you need to build. This is so interesting. This feels like, you know, seasons, long seasons past. Momo, he's just going to have to, you know, sit on a stick all day while Chiku is having the time of his life as they have swapped lanes. It's a switcher. Oh, yes. Well, yep. what this allows for uh, Chiku to do is just dominate the Uranus. There's that range advantage. And then for Lapu Lapu, for Momo, is he doesn't even care. The carry doesn't deal much damage in the early game. You can dominate with your nukes, with your early game skills. Absolutely. I mean, look yeah. at this. They already got it half, but MVG, they want to go for something here. Can they actually pull it off? I mean, Yumsuke, he sees what's going on and giving that extra information to Chiku. I feel like Todok want to actually bring the fight to Balvinas. So I'm wondering how this is going to work, but here in the mid lane already, a shadow kill committed. No kill, though, for either team. Back to the my question here. Is this as actually valuable to give Momo that gold lane and allow Lapu Lapu to get those items faster and then you have Chico here it's in on the XP lane? It's yeah, on no. condition, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's less about the items that they get and more of the interaction with the heroes and how they scale up into the mid game. Oh, beautiful first blood here. And I mean, look at that. The entire gold shield has been ripped off by Chiku guys itself instantly. Yeah. This is what I'm talking about. The tempo there, you're going to keep on pushing it and forcing these movements from Malvinas Gaming so they at least have some form of control. Yeah. yeah. I mean, first turtle of the game, they do have that advantage. Let's see if they can zone him out pretty well here. Steffi has to get out of there, too. It's just going to go over the hands of Rival. And this is the thing, right? Hayabusa with an early kill sets you up for that first easy turtle take. This is huge already for them. Mm -hmm. I feel like Malvinas Gaming was expecting Todok to play slow, but with the lane swap and how fast they're shredding down these neutral objectives, yeah. as well as turrets, I think Malvinas Gaming really need to rethink their plan. It's a very fundamental approach to the game. It was less about building items and more of this hero is not going to do anything to wow. me. Mm -hmm. Let me just take advantage of this. And look at this. Converting straight into a 245 push. Bottom lane. 
That's a no-go. That's a dead zone for MVG. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful map movements coming in from Todok. You can see the mid lane support run down to help Chiku guys, but at the same time, Hay uh, Hayabusa is not going to let free EXP and gold be a waste. Oh, Yoomski! Oh, Yoomski, you're going to go in with a oh. flicker, and everybody there to back him up, but they can't get the kill just yet. Harley able to get it out of dodge, but it's Dragon that falls here in the mid lane. A little unlucky there with the Shadow Kill RNG. It ended up onto the Uranus, but looking at topside, Joel Cruel. Go through, gonna try to get out. There's the flicker in with the kick as well. Chiku guys gonna fall here. Joel Crew picking up a kill. Yep, fight started and it was Chiku guys was actually ahead, right? Mm -hmm. Both on EXP and on gold, but they had the man advantage, MVG. They were just much, much faster. This is what I was talking about. If Stefik can hide in the right bushes, he can actually catch off guard TDK and maybe shrink this early gold lead. 1.5 in under four minutes, that's actually pretty big. Yeah, no, I think it's just the foreshadowing that Stefik foresaw. It's like, okay, you broke a tier one, where's the next move you're gonna make? You are gonna have to run through the river or walk through the lane to get to that top side of the map. Oh, fully stacked here. Steffi gonna Ooh. get taken out right away with a shadow kill to follow up. Forcing Harley out here with wings by wings, but another kill going to the hands of Todak. And now here's another concept that we have to understand. MVG, Steffi, he has so much to deal with, right? He has to protect both Harley and Joel Crew, and now Joel Crew's down. Yeah, there's nothing you can do to get out of that one. So, so now, cool. you have to consider, yes, he can find these ambushes, but where does that leave him? He might be trying to do too much. He's getting overloaded now. Yeah, I think right now, MVG, they're not entirely sure how they should take, what approach they should take with Todok, because even though Topside's ticket is, is already broken, you can see the Hayabusa and Lapu Lapu taking the initiative to hover around the turtle in case Malvina's Gaming doesn't touch it. Yep, so this is Todak's game so far. The, uh, the first five minutes, yeah. almost 4K ahead. It's Todak who's making the decisions, and MVG just following to their pace. Okay, Leo, I think we need to talk about win conditions here, right? Because Malvina's gaming, it feels like towards the later half, is going to have a bit of an advantage. Yes, but only if they can stop the initial TDK ambush. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's TDK who's saying, we do this, what do you do next? They have to bait out those ults first. Mm. That's how it's gonna happen in the late game. All right, it's about team fighting with 4K with a 4K lead. Hopefully, Malvinas Gaming they don't lose their mid turn because with that, at least they have some form of safety moving around in their jungle. Well, I mean, not only that, but I feel like part of this was what we were talking about—the flexibility uh, card that Todak likes to play here, right? And even so, when they switch lanes, I feel like oh. that did something. Oh, Yomsky gonna go in one more time. Steffi though, able to survive. Rival finding Harley though, gonna push them back into the jungle, and it's Joel Crew that falls. And now Dragon running as well. They might look for a crash oh. down here. Conceal play comes in. Steffi falls. That was beautiful. And. Honestly, I, oh, I I respect it. And now the next one is going to fall with a complete wipe here. Joel Cruel, Joel Crew, I'm I am surprised he was willing to flicker in for that. No, 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 Gideon, you're surprised that Todak is this clean and this quick and this fast. No, it's it's expected. Come on, I, 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 don't, I don't want to be that guy. What do they but call you, it again? There's a certain term. <sighs> All right, let There's me stand up for this. <laughs> put in some air in my lungs. It's called Todak Longa. Exactly. <laughs> See? So again, just in that one moment, right about five minutes in, 5.15, mm -hmm. you saw how Steffi was trying to bait out the Divine Judgment. And that's, a, again, a little bit of a trailer or a teaser as to how late game's going to happen. But you don't do that. Not like this. Not with 4K ahead. You're losing. You wait until that shrinks. I think now it's even more solidified that they have to wait. But with 7K gold lead six yeah. minutes into the game, so far, this is the biggest lead we've seen. It's because of that blunder. It's because of that whole cha-cha that, okay, I think we can fight him. Just wait for the ult. Wait for the ult. No, 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 no. You're not in shape yet. So for now, for MVG to try to recover, what they can do is hold back. Hold back. Wait for Joker to get the items and protect Harley as much as possible. Hide in your oh. jungle. Hide in your jungle under your turrets. They're still going to go for it. There is going to be a trade here, though, across the board. Steffi for Yumski. So they're happy with finding a kill here. But still, is it going to be enough? They're still crawling from being whiplashed by Todak. Mm, I don't think that was as worth it as I would like to believe for Todak, mainly because Yumski had to use his flicker. And that's a very powerful tool, especially for Kaja players, to close that distance. I I mean, yes, you could you would imagine that the the initial gap closer would be good enough, but yeah. you need to combo it. So we'll see. I don't think uh, they're going to do anything crazy until we do see Rival have his ultimate, and at the very least, Yumski has his flicker. Yep, looking at the items here, at least there's a Clock of Destiny on Harley. So all the more they have to stick to the late game plan. Clock of Destiny recently got reworked, so you get a little more stacks, a little longer the game goes. As for... Um, Dragon. I think Dragon is going to be key here to expand, extending the game. 
He has to find another lane that he can force TDK to split up. That's what a Uranus does best, right? Like try to bait out opponents, and I think slowly, maybe after one more tank item, yeah. the Malaysians will be slowed down in their siege. Ooh. So that's one way to do it. Just push one up, but no! Oh, they're gonna crash down here with the Divine Judgment. Prince Fran quite low, but the way of the dragon coming out on Chiku, guys. But meanwhile, mm. Moon able to get his own Harley oh. Falls. They're chasing back the Shadow Kill. Takes out Steffi, mm. and it's for that fall for MVG. Beautifully played by Momo, able to cancel that Feather and Airstrike, really putting the pressure on Malvinas right now. And Dragon unable to get into the fight in time to slow down the front line of Toda. Yeah, no, and I think he used the Flicker just to finish one hero off. The cancel was already done. He's like, I, I have my killer instinct, dude. I just need to Flicker in. And now they're going to convert straight up into a turret. And yeah, see, look, so Dragon, you can say Dragon, He's going up there. He's building up to at least some level of peel. This is crazy. Uh, an inhibitor turret in the base has gone down before that Lord has even spawned, right? That's just how much pressure TDK is putting here. And now Lord is up. This is a 10K gold lead nine minutes in. Yeah, I, I think for Malvinus Gaming, this is a really huge mountain to climb. And especially in local MPLs, a 10K gold lead is pretty much death to a lot of yeah. teams this early on mm. pre-10 minutes. Rarely happens. Yeah, rarely happens as well. Well, I don't know. MPL MY is a little whack. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why. That's why it explains how Tondak is just through the roof now. Look, even Yumski wow. deals more damage than Harley. I'm surprised that Moon is top of the charts. He's well, kind of killing it. <laughs> It's the terrifying. AOE, the a it's terrifying. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It, he, he's in everybody's faces, right? Uh, so, given how far a moon has taken this and how much gold rival is farming, this is also surprising, right? Because mm -hmm. if I'm not oh. mistaken, he's also taken away even MVG's jungle. Yeah, yeah, they're invading pretty often here. Are they going to sacrifice the tier two? But oh. it's you. Divine Judgment going to come out on Prince Fran. And the retribution, but still, they're gonna just push them off. They don't want to do the Lord. There's, there's yeah. nothing left for Prince Pran. He's more like a popper. Mm. And speaking of popping, dragon, the Peruvian dragon, more like the Peruvian lizard, just got popped. So it's, it's tough. So again, I presented one alternative. Dragon should buy a part of the map, right? So yeah. that the rest of them can try to farm up, give items to Harley and Joe crew. Mm -hmm. But it's so hard when Todak knows that they're that much ahead that they can divine judgment dragon and tell right. Yeah, and they also know that they don't need the Lord. The next yeah. inhibitor is about to fall. They are just naturally stronger. Oh, Steffi gonna get caught in a bad position here. Falls oh. into the jungle and now Joel crew I don't think he can get back to base in time here. He's gonna get Just chased run. down. Momo coming in flashy no. style with the <laughs> flicker. Not even needed here, but Joel Crew still on the run. You see, gonna dash in here. This is one way to do it. This is one way to do it. Say what you will. Joker was gonna die anyways, but he bought what? A solid 10, 15 seconds. Uh, 10, 15 seconds, but it's still it's still rough. I mean, they're not taking Lord. If Todak wants to end this game, they just take Lord, they just run it down, yeah. and they can pretty much force a fight guaranteed underneath the crystal of MVG. I'm looking at a threshold of maybe 15 minutes. But if, <laughs> if, if, if MVG can at least try to conserve themselves and stay alive up until 15 minutes, have at least maybe one more core item on Harley and Joe crew. Yeah. Maybe. But that's the thing. Like, who is your saving grace here for MVG, right? Harley, Joel Crew. Joel Crew is so far away from oh! that. Harley, though, able to survive just oh! barely. Oh! One step oh! behind. Chiku, guys, from the backside. Oh! Now they're going to find Joel Crew as we were just talking about him. They fall here, and another one goes down. Four fall again for MVG. And there's nothing Dragon can do here to defend. It's a maniac for Chiku, guys. GG, well Ooh. played. Game goes to Todak here as they're able to score their very first point here in Group B. Wow, what a game. How many times in this game was Dragon dragged? It, it, it came to that point wherein the Uranus has mm -hmm. maybe two main jobs, right? Mm -hmm. Past the three minute mark, you're looking at, okay, it's a losing game. Yeah. Dragon, you have to be the main field. Your, your, your lane is dead. Uh, and so far, Todak just leaned into it. Like usually, when, whenever a hero starts to put themselves right in front of you, you have to consider still at the early game, right? Because your CDR is not that high. Yeah. yeah. But at this point, they're like, no, just, just take Dragon. Just go. I think we need to take a st step back here because as much as we expect Dragon to actually look for that heal, that initial lane swap really makes all the difference. It was Whiplash. It was Whiplash, exactly. Literally. And it just continued to ripple throughout the game.
And it was that major decision that just changed everything. Yeah, because I feel like the whole time they were just like, ah, 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 what's going on? Excuse me? I, I learned that from you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, I mean, that's the thing, though. It's actually, that that was what we saw here unfold. They caught him off tempo. Yeah, off just, tempo. Yes. They couldn't get their bearings. Yeah, yeah, I think going into the game, it was all like Joel Crew is expecting, all right, the Popol and Koopa, I play this way. Yeah. And then Lapu Lapu versus Uranus, I play this way. But Toda just switched it up. Switched it up every single time. And I think, you know, people need to keep in mind the fundamentals of the game itself. And I think that Toda, they understand the fundamentals. And you could see that even when the mid lane had priority, the supports were not mirroring each other, which is a very big flaw for MBG because they needed a timing to actually swap the lanes back to get them in the right place. Yep, yeah, they tried and, and there was some method to the madness here and it looks like it all paid off for Todak. I'm actually liking how the Valentina did more of what you said, Gideon. Like, the fact that they will draft this way around it will yeah. force them to behave a certain way. And just a bit, we're going to be looking at the items and see exactly how much Todak used that early game advantage. What were we looking at? 2k, 3k at 4 minutes? And then 10k what? Right before 10 minutes. Right, like by 8, 9 minutes already, they were building up to that 10k. I oh. mean, look at this. 41.9k to 26.7. That is a brutal, brutal lead that Todak has. Yep, looking at how Momo built his Lapu Lapu going up against uh, Joel Cruz carry. He built hybrid, right? There's a little bit of defense there. And then eventually he was going to go all in on the damage. As for MVG, I'm wondering where Joel Crew was going here. He has a DHS. He has a Corrosion Scythe. So again, I think I was right to say 15 minutes because he would have then built either a full mm -hmm. defensive item to at least survive a wee bit or one more defensive damage uh, one more offensive item for the damage harley though he just built a lightning truncheon after that yeah he needs more he needs more <sighs> i mean it's the lead at the end of the day i i mean i i also i think you know that switch up with the popo and kubo how fast you could take down turrets. I mean, yeah. again, seeing an uh, inhibitor turret go down before that even first lord yeah. was, was massive in their game plan. Something tells me his first item was the Blade of Despair yeah. or the Malefic Roar. It Either was Blade way, of Despair. He can afford it. Mm -hmm. He can afford it. And, and it's because of that that the softies from Malvinas, I, I believe the only uh, real players he could not take down mm -hmm. uh, were was Prince Fran. Mm -hmm. Honestly, yeah. because even Dragon, Dragon is rocking a sprint. If you don't pop the sprint at the right time and it's Yumsky who gets on you, those arrows on the Popol and Koopa, are those spears, those spears, spears, spears yeah. on Popol and Koopa will get you. <laughs> Looking at the post-game stats here, obviously it's all for Todak, right? Except for the damage dealt. I want to see who took the most damage. I'm surprised it's Prince Fran. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was Dragon. Here's the thing. When Todak is looking to take neutral objectives, they don't want they want a guarantee, and the only guarantee they have is they take out Prince Fran, make sure, hey, we, they don't have to worry about retribution. I don't think Farsa is in any position to steal it away from us. One retribution down, we guarantee every single neutral objective, and they tried it multiple times with the Divine Judgment. Momo even trying to go for him, but mainly Yumski keeping a hawk eye on Prince Fran. And, and I'm going back to what I said during the draft, you know, you have two options for pickoffs with the Kaja plus the Valentina, mm -hmm. and that's what we saw so often here, and it worked. Again, it already took that shaken up MVG and just pressed on the wound basically throughout the game. Yep. Oh, that's one way of saying it. But let's have a look at our MVP of this game. Let's reveal it. Who's it going to be? It's Yumski, MVP of the game with a KDA of 1-1 one, one and 15. His Kaja, man, you better hope he doesn't have Flicker. Yep, in the early game, what he did was eventually confirm kills for that switch up, right? Mm -hmm. He could have made the call, uh, said, you know what, give hell to the carry or help Chico guys dominate that lane. And then in the mid game, confirm more kills. Again, he I think he has the most assists, one, uh, 115 and the total was 22, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he missed out on maybe, I was gonna say 25%, 76, <laughs> yeah? So given what Yumski did for uh, the squad, he allowed for everyone to do their job. He allowed for M Moon to deal the most damage. Again, pulling somebody, placing people where they need to be so that the terrifies and the nukes from the Valentina did their work. And then again, side laners and more importantly, for Rival. For Rival to choke out uh, Prince Fran and to take away everything from Malvinas, which led to this, I guess, if you can say most dominant game in the group stage so far, day one. I think, yes, this is the most dominant, more the most clean in a matter of fact, because in all of the chaos, when we look at these highlights, Yumski is looking for opportunities to yeah. open up yeah. Malvina's gaming. Yeah, there he is. Look, 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 look. Uh -huh. This 
is one of those moments in this game, what was this, six minutes in, yeah. that made you say, oh, no, 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 Todak wants to finish quick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And again, people have, I, I, I feel like the meta has progressed, but we also have to look back at history here. At the end of the day, Popo and Koopa is known for taking down towers like it's butter. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons why you draft him. So that's what I'm saying is now this is being a game in day one, even that lane swap, will other teams do this? Will they adjust to that? Because like you guys said, this is the most dominating game so far, right? You can learn a lot from this game here. And uh, again, it works so well for TDK. Yeah, it just, show, it just shows that ideology and understanding how each of the heroes work together makes such a difference. Yep, and this is something that we can take for the next games that we'll see where Toda competes, right? Against the lineup uh, that they drafted against Malvinas, they can do this, because again, they went in, and I'm about 80, 90% sure that the switch up was decided yeah. right even before the last two picks were made. So they're holding their phones, they're seeing the loading screens come down, the sensors are going, and Chico looks over at Momo yeah. is like, Let's do I'm it. sorry, buddy. We're doing it. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that's, that's how confident I am in knowing what Todak's plans were, mm. because they executed so clean. But that's the thing, even in the Keys of Victory, this is a team that can play any role, any lane, any position, basically, right? And it. That was, that was proof. Well, with the game already said and done, I, got, I really have to think about this because for the, how is this really gonna impact how people look at the meta? Is this truly the most effective strategy or do they just understand the fundamentals that well? It's really, really tough to say, but this is only just day one for the time being. Hopefully we're gonna see more than that because the next match, it's gonna be Falcon looking to get the point for themselves to try and tie the odds in their group against Burn. Next Flash. That's gonna be a very, very exciting game. We're looking to Falcon recovering and yeah. then Burn X Flash making their debut here at the world stage. It's a big story that we can't wait to tell you guys all about. Mm -hmm. Any final words nice to about Burn X Flash? I mean, I've heard so much about it. Can't wait to see it. And also, I mean, there was a surprise with Falcon, so maybe this is the recovery, but then again, Burn X Flash has been looking for